In the last video, we say that we have the memories storing the inputs and the LU doing the calculations. Then we use a simple example, adding two numbers together and store the result. The memories and the LU are wired to the sequencer. So users only need to apply power. The series of actions are automated. So now computing means turning on these units to let electricity data striking the LU to produce the result. But the current wiring can only do addition, and it requires the users to always put inputs in the first two memories and store the result into the third. Users have no choice in deciding which operation to perform and on what, because they are all connected directly. So how can we automate by hardwiring, but still give users the freedom to choose? The answer is through instructions. Notice that we are not talking about the instructions programmers use from the outside when programming. In this video, we will see what instructions really are from the inside and how they do things. If we inspect the wirings, you see that each wire is controlling a specific aspect, during which step to turn on, at a certain time to turn on. The AND gates combine these two providing output wires that can be used to turn on the two inputs in sequence. But which two units get turned on is fully determined as the hardware engineers make the connections. For example here, M0 and M1 are chosen, so users will have to place inputs in these two units. To allow users to step in, the hard wiring should be indifferent to the units. The timing control wires should be able to turn on any of these memory units as the first input. That's why both the timing wire and the step wire are connected to all these units to allow all of them to be turned on as the first input. Exactly which one gets turned on is user's call through additional control wires. So we use three input AND gates to allow for one more layer of control. Users pick the right one by turning on the corresponding wire. If you want M0, turn on the first wire. If you want M1, turn on the second. And these four wires is to choose the first operand. Then, for the second operand, we need to turn it on at step 2. So we need another set of AND gates, allowing the timing wires to turn them on as the second input and another four choice wires allowing users to choose which one is the second input. These four output wires should also be able to turn on one of these four units. So for each unit, we have two wires that can turn it on. Hence, we need OR gates to avoid interferences. In terms of output unit, we also need four AND gates to allow the timing wires to turn them on during step 3 and four choice wires to select the unit. Now in terms of selecting the operations, there are seven choices. We can choose the operation by turning on the corresponding buffer wires. So for users to indicate the operation they wish to do, besides the timing control, we also add seven choice wires, combining them through AND gates. These operation choice wires are also at user's discretion. If you want to add, simply turn on the adder line, getting it ready. It will be turned on when it's step 2. Similarly, by turning on or off the input and output choice wires, users indicate on what this operation will operate, and where to store the output. These high-low voltages telling computers what operation to perform and on what is an instruction. So from the outside, the instructions are used by the programmers to express what they want to do. But inside, they are electricity who can actually do things. Instructions allow users to control where the inputs are and where to store the output. Notice that the other system memory units like temp, ACC, are only controlled by the timing wires, not by the instructions. 
so they are not controlled by the users because they don't need to. Users only care about what to be added and where to get the result. They don't need to know the internal steps. These electrical voltages have to be maintained in a memory unit called instruction register. Now the question is how to get instructions to here. The easiest way is to connect these wires to the outside keyboard, for example, for the users to key in directly. Give one instruction, get the result, then give another one, and so on. Similar to how we use a simple calculator. The calculation is automatic, but feeding instructions is manual. To get instructions automatically, we need more memory units in order to store all the instructions to. Users' instructions will go to these memory units first. Then we can wire the instruction register to fetch instructions. Before getting into the details about how to fetch instructions automatically, we need to discuss what kind of memory structure we need here. For complicated problems, there are many intermediate steps in order to get the final result. So we have many instructions to be stored, and they will also produce intermediate results to be stored. So we need way more memory units for both the instructions and the results. If you attach more units this way, it's not using the physical space wisely. It's better to put them in a grid. For example, here, we have 16 by 16 memory cells, total 256. Each one is connected to the bus, with two control wires for input and output permission. Now let's think about how to turn on these units to get or store data. We need to think about who needs to turn them on. Eventually, instructions need to turn on these memory units to get inputs for calculations. They also need to turn them on to store the results. If we still use this one-to-one -one control, that is, using one control wire to turn on one unit, then we need 256 wires to pick just one unit. It's overwhelming for the users to provide instructions now, because there are over 500 bits to turn on or off. Imagine if you have 16 gigabyte memory, or 16 billion cells to control. So this brings us to the next topic, how to access memory grid efficiently using decoders. The decoders will allow us to control many through a few. I also have a question for you to think about. Since we have the memory grid to store the data and the instructions, do we still need these middle memory units here? 